All right, folks, glad to have all of you here for our big announcement. On Saturday, we marked the third anniversary of Roland Martin Unfiltered. That's right, the third anniversary. Can you believe it? Uh, it has been a phenomenal three years. If you have been with us along the way, uh, helping to build this, the first daily digital show specifically targeting African Americans, uh, five days a week when we started, we were one hour, and then we moved to two hours in our second year. Unbelievable growth, have more than a billion minutes watched. Uh, we've had uh, just numerous interviews, and of course, averaging 20, 30 million views a month. Just phenomenal growth. But that was never the plan, just to have Roland Martin unfiltered. So I am excited today. Well, you know what, before I do that, before I do that, uh, I'll tell you this here. Why do we do the show? Uh, that's because, of course, remember, we abide by, uh, like all the black press, that initial black newspaper, Freedom's Journal, March 16th, 1827. Uh, this is when they dropped the paper, Freedom's Journal, the nation's first black newspaper. Uh, and this is it right here. And the thing about Freedom's Journal, in the third paragraph is this. This is what they wrote. We wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us. Too long has the public been deceived by misrepresentation in things which concern us dearly. No, we didn't misspell public. That's how it originally was written in 1827. That is the quote that the black press has used. And so over the years, you talk about Frederick Douglass, the North Star, Ida B. Wells Barnett, her writings uh, dealing with pamphlets, uh, uh, dealing with lynching, of course, the Pittsburgh Courier, Robert Abner, the Chicago Defender, the Atlanta Daily World. Uh, we can go on and on and on. Claude Burnett's Associated Negro uh, uh, Press, of course, Negro Digest, Ebony, Jet, Essence Magazine, Black Enterprise, WOL goes to Radio One, becomes Urban One, BET, TV One. There's a long history of Black-owned media, but we're now living in a digital world, which means that we have to have a digital focus. What did Gil Scott Heron say? Revolution will not be televised. I dare say the revolution will be streamed, which is why today we are announcing this, Black Star Network. Black Star Network is going to be an OTT network available on all platforms across the country. And when I say all platforms, I'm talking all platforms. The app right now is available uh, on your uh, iPhone, on your Android, plus Apple TV, Roku, Samsung, Xbox, uh, Amazon Fire TV as well. So uh, let me show you this right here. And so as you see, uh, we got our Roku up uh, as we speak. If you arrow down here, what you will see is... Black Star Network, curated by Roland S. Martin. Now, it will take you uh, to uh, our homepage. Uh, we are already signed in, as you see right here. Uh, we are live, uh, so you see, you see all the content uh, we have already up here. Uh, like I say, the app is live, so if we click that, you actually can start watching and then you'll actually see the program. And so here's the deal. It takes you to this page right here. Now, there are a lot of people who were telling me that, hey, you know what, you should charge. You see the different people. You've got Fox uh, Nation. You've got uh, even Black News Channel announced they're going to have a paid, a paid uh, streaming service. We're not going to do that. And again, people told me I should have. But the reality is a lot of our people simply cannot afford to pay for a streaming service. And so we purposely chose to keep uh, this free. We purposely chose to, for people to be able uh, to access uh, our content. That's what we've done with this show as well, which is why your support for our Bring the Funk fan club has been so critical because you've been able to give us the opportunity to be able to provide the content to our audience for free. Up until now, we've been live streaming on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, Instagram as well. We're going to continue streaming the show on the platforms, but now we have the ability to have the platform uh, on our own app. But it's not just going to be Roland Martin Unfiltered. I'm going to be uh, unveiling over the next few weeks the shows that we're going to be having. We're going to have, folks, uh, in the next couple of months, five hours of original content every single day, a series of daily as well as weekly shows. We will then go up to eight hours of original content every single day. Repeat that uh, twice in the 24-hour cycle. In the first quarter of 2022, we will unveil the Black Star Network 24-hour uh, streaming channel. That's right. Our goal is to be on Tubi, Pluto TV, Samsung uh, Plus, all those platforms with our 24-hour streaming channel. We have, been, of course, been building our content library, doing some amazing things. And the first interview that we're going to drop 
on Black Star Network. It will go up on Saturday morning. It is with noted civil rights attorney Fred Gray. He is 90 years old. He was the legal mastermind uh, behind so many of our civil rights victories. Now, Dr. King did not make a move without calling Fred Gray. He also was the one the, who sat at the table to help create the Montgomery bus boycott. Here's a look of my conversation with Fred Gray. When you think back to all of those moments, I've often said that one of the greatest mistakes that we make today is that we focus on the march, the speech, the event, but not the strategizing, the, the, the planning, the discussion. Uh, talk about that, what that was like to be in those conversations in the back and forth, whether it was King or Lowry or Marshall or all different players, Wilkins and Whitney Young, everyone, as they strategize and walk through and visualize and bounce things off and you're, the, you're there as the lawyer uh, navigating that as well, how vital the strategizing was in the movement. It was very, very important. And let me tell you about the Montgomery bus boycott because I'm almost the only person who was in the inner circle of the planning of the Montgomery bus boycott. I think there's probably only one now that's left other than me. And that one was one that ended up uh, uh, getting out of the movement before it was over and going on something else. So of those who stuck with it, I'm just about the only one who's there. Let me tell you how the plans were made. And most people didn't know about it even then, and they were part of it <laughs> in connection with keeping people off of the buses. Well, we all realized that at some point, we're going to have to file a lawsuit to declare the uh, city ordinances and state statutes unconstitutional. However, it takes a long time to do a lawsuit. You can do it. You've tried. you got two or three appeals. Take two or three years. And if you're going to tell people immediately that you've got to stay off of the buses until a lawsuit is resolved, they say you whistling Dixit. All right, folks, uh, again, you're going to be able to see that full interview uh, on Saturday on Black Star Network. Now, if you're watching right now, folks, you can actually download the app right now on your mobile device. You can download it on your Apple TV, on your Roku any of your devices. Now, we were just in Los Angeles doing a variety of interviews because we're also going to be having a weekly one-on-one -on -one show called Rolling with Roland. One of the folks we talked with in L.A. was my man, Jeffrey Osborne. Here's a sneak peek of that conversation. When did the damn woo-woo song just become, like, stupid crazy? You know what? It was... It was so funny because that song was written by. I wish I had written that song, by the way. Uh, <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet you do. It was written by a couple of friends of mine, uh, Bruce Roberts, Andy Goldmark, and it was called "You Should Be Mine." And I recorded it. I came home, and I'm playing it around the house, you know. And my daughter was three. Tiffany was three years old at the time. So I tell y'all long ago. Yeah. And she kept walking by singing "Woo Woo," and she said, "Dad, I love that Woo Woo song." And I'm like, you can barely talk. Well, that's not the woo-woo song. It's called You Should Be Mine. No, it's the woo-woo song. No, it's You Should Be Mine. No, it's the woo-woo song. So I'm fighting with a three-year-old. So, <laughs> so I called the songwriter and I said, my daughter said, this is the woo-woo song. And they said, well, maybe she's right. So they kind of named it the You Should Be Mine, but in parentheses, right. it's called the woo-woo song, right? Wow. So the record company, before it was released, they were sold on this song. They was like, oh, this song's a hit. So they went out in the street with microphones in the city and had people sing woo, woo, woo. And that was part of their campaign. And wow. people were going crazy over just singing, can you woo, 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 woo? 
And that song just blew up. And from then, now they, people are calling me the woo woo man. I'm right. like, I'm like, what? Right. You, like, you ain't, you don't uh, uh, Jeff, that's a woo woo man. Right, it's a woo woo man, exactly. But that song, man, it, even still today, I go out and people sing, they love it. And the worse they are, the more fun it is. <laughs> <laughs> it don't even matter how good you are or how bad you are. Then people started showing up to concerts knowing I was going to go, they were showing up with instruments. Guys were sitting out with saxophones. I come Are you serious? I'm serious. I'm serious. They got up with a saxophone. One guy had a flute. I'm like, what? It's like, the I'm going to get my moment. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Oh, now that's, that's, that's wild. That's, it is wild. Yeah, people just started showing up with instruments. One lady had a tambourine. Just wanted to play the tambourine. I'm like, this is not an audition. <laughs> this is... <laughs> oh. had, 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 had you ever done a show and you didn't sing it and they were mad as hell? Uh, I don't think I've ever not sung that show. So as y'all can see, you can actually see, boom, the network, the interview right there, uh, live as we're broadcasting the show on uh, Black Star Network. Now, remember when I went to Ghana in 2019? Uh, we were there for 10 days. We shot some amazing stuff. Well, COVID greatly impacted us last year, my Ghanaian crew. Uh, we have been busy uh, uh, this year finishing up the project. We're putting together a 10-part series that will air exclusively on Black Star Network. You now get the first peek at the scissor reel of 1619 to 2019, the year of return. You read about it in history, you know, you talk about it, you see it on our side, you know, of the United States, but to actually come here and see where this, this story of slavery started um, and connecting the dots, it's just a wild factor for me right now. It's going to be dark inside. You might not see too much. But you're gonna feel everything. Just imagine see prisons in the yard in the United States. A lot of us get to be a real honor. What is required in 2019, 2021, simply for us to be reprogrammed for what they taught us needs to be removed and extracted. It just doesn't make sense that the richest continent in the world should be inhabited by the poorest people of the world. Part of that is by design. Um, Self-hatred has been a very tragic part of our whole existence. And I'm not blaming anybody for it, but if you look at most characterizations of being of African descent in the world, it's with these kind of tags. I always say, you're going to do a lot of shopping. They go, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> and then they come, so they've brought limited reserves, and then they spend all their time running to the ATM uh -huh. because they see all these clothes they want and fabric they want. It's overwhelming. I've been here for eight years, and I'm still taking pictures out of my car because it's just, it's a feast for the eyes on any given day. The kind of opportunities you have in Africa, you don't have those in America. The kind of money that you can make in Africa, very few of you would have that opportunity to do that in America. Cordy, who was working for the Congress in the United States, she has started a waste management company. She's the number one here in Ghana now. She, she looked at dollar signs and trash. There it is. What used to be jeans. Used to be jeans. Is now a huge problem. In Ghana alone, we have a two million unit deficit in housing. Two million. Two million. <laughs> Seven of the ten fastest growing economies mm -hmm. right now are African nations. Why in the world would we not be trying to figure out how to connect? Because the Lebanese are, yeah, the Chinese everyone are, is everyone else is doing it. We will be crazy to do it. And it's for people who look like us. We will be crazy we'll to do, do it. Crazy we'll to do it. Crazy to do it.
But one of the issues that we have when we're streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope, Instagram, that we are limited in doing what we call pre-rolls. And so when we have advertisers who want to actually run spots, well, we have to go through all these different hoops. Now having our own OTT network, we can actually integrate a commercials like this into our programming. Of course, we partnered with Coca-Cola for the uh, MEX Black Challenge. We're going to be attending three HBCUs with HBCU games with them uh, uh, this year. Uh, we'll be at the Magic City Classic in Birmingham. We'll be at the Bayou Classic in New Orleans. And of course, the Celebration Bowl in Atlanta in December. And so for the advertisers who we're talking to, we'll be able to do this on Black Star Network. Try it first. All right then, folks. And so uh, it has been absolutely phenomenal. Now, you may be asking, how did I come up with the name Black Star Network? Well, last year, uh, we actually tasked a company to uh, put together uh, a list of names. And so what they did was they sat with some marketers and they sat around the room and uh, they spent uh, a couple of days uh, tossing out different things. And I wasn't happy with what they came back with. And then something hit me. Something hit me in 2020. I thought about Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey had a cruise line. That cruise line was called Black Star. The cruise line's purpose was to connect African Americans with people in the African diaspora. Of course, when I went to Ghana in 2019, I had an opportunity to actually visit the Black Star that's in Accra, Ghana. This gate was built uh, by Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, uh, and it was revealed. And so I got a chance to go to the top of the gate and actually take this photo uh, on top of the gate, which is exactly what we did. And so uh, I was thinking about it and I said, hmm, that could be a very good idea. Black Star Network. Not only because of that connection, uh, I also wanted to be able to say, what are we about creating Black stars with our digital platform. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and show it. Uh, and so that's one of the photos there. You saw it in the video as well. And so there were several, there were several um, uh, different photos that we shot uh, because uh, Nkrumah wanted that that he wanted a, a, a Ghana to be the gateway to. Africa. Well, uh, we want Black Star Network to be the gateway to Black-owned content, to give an opportunity to Black creators to be able to, to do, show what they can do. And so we've got some phenomenal things that we have planned. I'm not going to announce the shows that we have lined up, but folks, uh, trust me, uh, we're focused. Uh, it's, it's an amazing stuff. We're in three different areas, news, politics, business, tech, and also in culture. Culture could be religion. Uh, it could be entertainment. Uh, it could be any number of things. It could be cooking. It could be, it could be comedy. It could be all kinds of and stuff uh, and so man we got some stuff lined up uh, and so we're going to be unveiling these shows uh, over the next several weeks and so I really look forward to it uh, I can already see so what happens is as y'all are signing up I get notifications uh, of people uh, who uh, are signing up and boy I tell you uh, the emails are just going and going and going uh, y'all are signing up right now and so while you're signing up uh, for the OTT channel. Also, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Black Star Network. We also have all of our social media handles ready, so you see right there. Those are all the social media handles. You can, you can go sign up right now to our Black Star Network Facebook page. You also have our Black Star uh, Network YouTube page. Uh, Twitter, uh, we couldn't get all black in there with Star and Network, so Twitter is BLK Star Network. You can also go there. You can also see our Instagram page. And so all of those uh, pages are already there. I want every single one of you who already follow me uh, to follow uh, all of those different um, uh, accounts as well because we're going to be pushing out uh, some great, amazing content, uh, folks, uh, with this particular network. And again, it is 100% black owned. This is an opportunity for us to be able to speak to our issues, for us to be able uh, to really uh, have the kind of content uh, that's needed. 
And by having the OTT network again, we're not limited by what we're doing right now on YouTube, Facebook. And so uh, I dare say for, the, for all these advertisers out here who keep saying they want to support black owned media, now is your shot. Uh, now is your shot to actually support. Uh, I had people who were saying that, well, you know what, you're streaming on those platforms. We really could do business if you had your own. This is my own. Now you have no more excuses to say you can't support what we are doing. As I said, uh, we're putting together uh, our 24-hour uh, streaming network. I I'm going to do something here. So, uh, Henry, why don't you go ahead and do this here. Y'all, we're here uh, in our new studios. Uh, Y'all have seen uh, the shot of our control room. And so we're building this whole thing out. And so I'm just going to give y'all a glimpse of what y'all are seeing right now. You're seeing the backdrop. And so I'm just going to give y'all just a sense. So you see the colors here. And so these are all glass offices here. When we unveil our new studio, hopefully next week, uh, all of these offices will be lit. And so all of this is actually being built out uh, as we speak. Uh, we're actually having a set that set is being built right now uh, by an Alfred brother who's, uh, of course, in set designer, Hollywood set designer, teaching at, Har uh, at uh, Howard University. Uh, that's being built as we speak, will be installed next week. Uh, then, of course, you have our uh, set, our new set that's over here uh, that you've been seeing me uh, as well. And so we have been working on that. We got the Leroy Campbell art piece. Uh, you see that as well. And of course, we're going to be, uh, all of that is going to be all designed. Uh, and I told you just the other day, uh, we actually have, of course, uh, the Black-Owned Drape Company that installed our green screen, and so we got that as well. So a whole lot of things happening here at uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered, now Black Star Network as well. And so what you'll have to understand is that We've been working real hard over the last 18 months. A lot of people uh, we've been talking to, working with, uh, again, on this whole deal. People have been working with us on uh, economic strategies. We've been talking, we've been looking at uh, doing crowdfunding. We've been talking about uh, all of those different things. Uh, I sort of held off on that because we really wanted uh, to build this thing proper. Uh, Dwayne McKnight with the Marathon Fund, uh, we've been meeting with him uh, on, uh, again, uh, finances. How do we actually build this out economically, but y'all have been so critical because it's your resources that have been helped us to be able uh, not to have to go out and give away equity uh, for a small amount of money. We've been able to build this thing uh, very methodical uh, over the past 18 months, and so that was always the plan. And you got to understand who also saw this, my wife, Reverend Jackie Hood Martin. When I had my 40th birthday, she was asked the question, is in the video, she was asked the question, what will Roland Martin be doing by the time he's 50? And she said he will have his own network. Remember, I turned down the t deal at TV One in 2018 after the news, after news One Now was canceled, and I was 49. We launched Roland Martin Unfiltered on September 3rd, 2018. I'll be 53 in November. We were building this for the future, and I can't wait to unveil the stuff that we have. Uh, and so it's gonna be uh, fantastic. Y'all have played a huge part in it. And so we want you to tell all your friends, all your family, they can download the app. They can now watch our content on their television. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of our seasoned saints, you don't have to see them try to get them to figure out how to use their phone. If they have Apple TV, if they have Roku, if they have Amazon Fire TV, if they have uh, Samsung uh, Tizen, if they have Xbox, they can now watch uh, Black Star Network and Roland Martin Unfiltered on all of those platforms. Black Star Roland Martin Unfiltered video is just one moment. Seek.com is a black-owned virtual reality company founded by Mary Spio. That's right, a VR is uh, all the rage. Uh, the ability for you to be able to actually be immersed in the space to feel what's going on. Imagine being at a concert and you're watching the concert, but you're actually 
in the seat in the concert. And so that you can able to see the great uh, videos and all kinds of different things on seat.com. Using their VR headset, you simply just drop your phone right into here. And again, you're able to then immerse yourself in the experience uh, right there. Uh, also, of course, they have these great headphones right here, the 360 degree headphones. Uh, you can use this for gaming. It's Bluetooth. You can talk on them as well. The bass is tremendous. I love uh, jamming these when I'm on air, uh, airplanes. Uh, folks, uh, you can get these by going to seek.com using the promo code RMVIP21. RMVIP21. Uh, where you can uh, get these. And when you purchase one or both of these, a portion of the proceeds comes back to us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. You know, we support black owned businesses, and it's the black owned businesses giving back to us as well. So go to seek.com, C E E K.com, uh, to get these items.